Okay, I'm back and I got tape and I got rubber bands, so I'm all set. <laughs> um, first we need to do is to figure out how long this needs to be. Um, this is our igniter and um, I'm gonna remove that red cap. I don't need that. Um, like this is way too long right now. Um, but uh, you'll see the hole down here and it's, I don't know, you probably can't see it in here, but that's, there's an, a hole here for the igniter. Let me see if I can get it in here. And you have to feed it in through that way. And let me grab it. There it is. Okay, so the igniter, you need it long enough to where you can um, fish down in there and get it into the hole, but not so long that we have a lot of excess wire inside the rocket. So I'm going to cut it right about here, remove some of the excess wire inside my eBay. Um, I'm gonna pull it back out. Separate those wires and then just restrip them. <sighs> Accidentally cut it. Since I cut that one, I might as well cut this one. Okay. All right, so those are both stripped and ready to go into the terminal. Now the, the E-match end is going to go into our well of black powder. So we're gonna stick that in there, kind of shake everything down, and then make a little bulb like that. And now we can either like take a rubber band, and I got a small rubber band here. And just putting it around there as tight as I can. Okay, you could do that. That's gonna hold it in. And basically, we're just making a little container here to hold the black powder. You don't have to use a rubber glove. You can also use a, like the corner off of a plastic bag. And we're not trying to make it like super durable. Um, what we want is the, the gas. So when the igniter fires, it's going to set off the black powder and make a lot of gas. And it's that gas that's going to pressurize. So we're not looking for an explosion. We're just looking for a lot of gas. Um, so you can use anything for the container, just as long as it's not going to dump out on you. Like, you know, I can hold it upside down and it's not dumping out. Um, you can also use tape if you want. You can tape it, you know, pull it real tight tape it down, cinch it down so that it doesn't move, um, just like that. Um, and then this end, again, we're gonna have to feed it back through that little hole. So let me look down the hole. Okay, so I got it through. Having tweezers or hemostats like this is really helpful. Okay, so now that one is our, L, um, our Apogee charge. So that's the A. And the Apogee means it's, it's always gonna fire right at the Apogee of the rocket. So even if the rocket comes off the pad and goes unstable, it's gonna fire it. Um, and I've saved a lot of rockets this way um, from just demolishing them just because the, the Apogee charge is like, it's a backup. I've had an Apogee charge go off like 20 feet above the ground um, because the rocket went unstable and it survived because it got the parachute out. It wasn't fully deployed, but it did get it out. I think it's cinched down. There we go. Make sure that these are in all the way. And 
cinch down. Okay, give a good tug on them. So this is like way too long. Now, this is going to be coiled up and stuck inside the rocket. Now, make sure you don't put it into the motor tube. We've done that before, and that ended pretty bad, because what it did is it pressurized that motor tube, and it actually blew out a bulkhead. Um, so, you know, just keep it, you know, inside the eBay, you know, the, the parachute bay, you know, as close to the bottom as you can. Um, and then it's going to be covered up with the, uh, the heat shield that's going to go on your shock cord. I've removed mine just to, you know, make things easier. So that is the Apogee charge. And now the motor is ignited with a different igniter. We talked about this earlier. Uh, we're going to use the Aerotech First Fire Mini because it depends on what motor you're flying and what battery. Um, so this is the, the correct uh, igniter for this motor. Um, and that has to come out. See, our rocket's going to be back here inside. And this has to go in here. And then it has to go inside that tube all the way up to here. And you can see... There's no way I'm going to be able to reach that terminal block right there. So I need an extension, probably a good 12 inches long. Um, so this is where you're going to need some extra wire. I wish they made these longer. <laughs> they don't. Um, the only reason you need them longer, though, is for staging like this. So um, go out on your launch range. Um, and then dig through the garbage can because, you know, every time somebody fires a Cesaroni motor, they get the long wire. And this is perfect for this task of making an extension. So I'm going to cut this. And we have to splice this wire onto this wire. Uh, and now you got to do it kind of a special way because we just can't connect them like this because um, it's going to create a big bump because the two wires with the tape or heat shrink is going to make it too hard to go through that small hole that we have for the igniter. Um, so we have to stagger it, which means we're going to cut one here long, and then the other one we're going to connect it down here so that when we splice it together, it's only one wire thick at any, any point. So I'll strip that one. And then on this one, that's going to go there. And I have to spread these apart. So this one I'll cut there. And re-splice it here. <laughs> Too short. That'll be okay. I can always make this one shorter. Okay, so for this, I'm going to solder them together. Um, now you can, you'll also need to either use electrical tape, you know, to put more insulation on or shrink tube. And I have some shrink tube that I like using. So I'll just cut off a piece. And I didn't bring anything to shrink this. Oh, yes, I did. Okay, so one on each of the igniter wires. Okay, I'm going to put them in my vise here just to hold it because it's a little bit easier doing it that way. wires. Okay, that one's
one's better. Now this one. Eh, a little long yet. Let me cut it off. I would recommend you do several igniters so that you have a whole bunch ready to go just in case. All right. Okay, so now this has to go into the igniter hole and it will come out here. My tool. And it has to go, it actually has to go all the way to this one up here. All right, so how long do you make it? Well, put your motor in. Make sure it will go in to where it bottoms out, like right there, and then keep pulling. So I want a little bit of slack right there. So that's the slack I need. And then on this end, it needs to go back into the, the timer port on my um, so this wire is actually like the perfect length, so I can live with that. Okay, so then this. All right, so now I'm pulling this out because you don't want to have a live motor with an igniter in it. All right, so that's the correct length of the igniter coming out the back. Um, we got our battery connector right here. Um, when we're ready to fly, um, make sure this is turned off. Okay, so it's off. Um, Again, I just have sand in here, so I'm not worried about it. Um, when you're ready to fly, do this outdoors on the launch field. You know, um, you'll hook up your battery. Now we gotta make sure that our battery fits in there right there. We're gonna stuff those cords. We can kind of tuck them underneath the sides. This will connect to here. It gets tucked into there. Uh, and that point, we can turn on our timer, you know, um, you're going to take it out to the pad, um, then you're going to put your latch on, um, put the plunger in, where's my plunger? That was lock that down, so now that, that's not coming off. Um, and now, you know, put it on the pad, and you can turn things on and get ready to launch. Um, we will do another video. I think 
out on the laundry range so to show you you know that final preparation and getting it ready for launch um, I think that covers about everything um, motor selection see the manual for the uh, for this rocket um, this is an unusual rocket that um, if you use um, specific combinations of motors it will it will bump it up into a high power rocket which means you'll need your level one certification to fly it but with other motors if you look in the manual you can fly it as a mid power rocket where you don't need certification um, specifically you'll use um, Aerotech or Quest motors in the booster stage um, because they're the propellant amount is smaller um, than the Estes motors. Uh, Estes motors, it takes twice as much propellant for the same amount of thrust. Um, so by using the Quest and Aerotech motors, we can get low enough on the propellant weight to make it a, a mid-power rocket rather than a high-power rocket. Um, so check the manual for that. Um, and then, you know, we went through in the instructions on prepping the parachutes for flight. Um, review that again. Um, you know, how to hook everything up. That was covered previously. So I think that's everything um, except for launching. And so hopefully the next time you see this, we're out on a launch pad getting ready to launch. So we'll see you then.